Yokus here. This is Inside the Ministry on Over Current Reality. Today's date is October 25th, 2020 at 5.51 p.m. Eastern Time. There's a lot going on in the world today and I want to get into it. But first, before I get into it, let's talk about the threshold. Going back to Matthew chapter 6, 1 through 4, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him. By asking him to show them a sign from heaven. He replied, when evening comes, you say it will be fair weather. For the sky is red and in the morning. Today, it will be stormy. For the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky. But you cannot interpret the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign. But none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Jesus then left them and went away. At this point, the Lord's ministry on earth, he was fed up with the constant barbarding of the unbelieving Jewish leaders, continually asking for a sign to prove his words. The signs were all around them, but they were too blind to see. And if all the prophecies relating to Jesus' first coming He fulfilled them all, but the blind were leading the blind, and therefore truly few truly believed. The Jewish people in that day were much unlike most of the people in the church today. They knew the scriptures, and most in the church today do not. They, on the other hand, were trained on the scriptures from their youth, so they were very familiar with them. God in the flesh stood in their presence and they as a whole rejected him even though all the signs were right in their face. The signs of Jesus' second coming were all around us today. They are plentiful. They are like a balloon filled with air that is almost about to burst. Unfortunately, many today in the church are as blind as they were When the Sadducees and the Pharisees were walking this earth. If we are part of the true church today, we are saved. But many in the church today are totally unaware of what is ahead. Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, is coming soon. I don't know when will be the rapture of the church, the bride. Then the seven years of tribulation. Then the Christ's second coming. And then... The millennium, 1,000 year reign, and then eternity. And I wonder if the Lord Jesus is maybe just a little perturbed with those of us who are asleep. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 8 through 10, with all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which be proposed in Christ. To be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment. To bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Jesus wants us to know the season of his return. Now think about it. There are more prophecies of Jesus Christ. Second coming than the first. He wants us today to know that time is running out and we need to be telling others this very thing. We need to keep something in mind and that is it would be better to be very busy serving and living for him when he snatches us away, rapture, than to be embarrassed by our actions at that time. We live in a world with many more temptations than any other generation before us. Our world is corrupt and it is getting more and more rotten each and every day. Now let us consider the very passages from Isaiah, understanding that they are specifically for Israel, but also understanding that God doesn't put them in the Bible for us to ignore. Therefore, the message is also for us to heed. The Bible says in Isaiah 64, verse 6 through 8, All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all of our righteous acts are as filthy as rags, dirty rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, 
And like the wind, our sins swept us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Now, God is the father of all of his creation. God is the father of all in this respect. He is the creator of us all. From a personal standpoint, he is the father only of those who have put their trust in Jesus, his son. But from a collective standpoint and point of view, he is the father of all, but only as their creator. So more than once, Isaiah stated that we are unclean and our righteousness are as filthy rags. Now, please notice they had the same problem than that we have today. The Bible says no one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you. So then also notice that God hid his face from them and gave them over to their sins. This is exactly what the Apostle Paul is talking about in Romans chapter 1 verse 18 through 32. Three times Paul states that God gave them over now i am of the opinion that god has done exactly what with us he has done exactly that with us today he has given us over to our sins and turned us away by turning his face from us as a nation the end may be closer than you think are we not as a nation just like those in Noah's day? Theirs was a very evil generation. And the people went ahead and went about their lives without a care in the world about the judgment that God was bringing. But judgment came in the form of a worldwide flood. Only those who trusted in God were saved. Now, just prior to the flood, a man named Enoch, was removed from the earth. He was removed from this earth by God and taken to heaven. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, Enoch walked faithfully with God. Then he was not anymore. He was no more. Because God took him away. So this is a picture of the church today. The church will be removed just prior to the judgment what you call tribulation to come upon this whole entire earth ladies and gentlemen we are living in that time right now noah with his family is a picture of those who will be saved during the time of tribulation the many that perish in the flood are a picture of those who are lost and will perish in the tribulation the bible says in isaiah chapter 65 verse 1 through 2 i revealed myself to those who did not ask for me I was found by those who did not seek me to a nation that did not call on my name. I said, here I am. Here am I. All day long, I have held out my hands to an obstinate people who walk in ways not good, pursuing their own imaginations. Ladies and gentlemen, for 120 years, Noah preached to the masses in an attempt to convince them that a great flood was coming. God warned the people in that day of his coming judgment, but there were no converts except Noah and his family. So today, God is calling out today to all who will listen that judgment is coming. But again, few are listening. Instead, they relish their sinful ways. And pile up sin upon sin. We are so frustrated with our sinful ways that we have moved God out of the way, least He interferes. Now, having removed God from our society, we educate our children to follow our footsteps, and they have become more greater blasphemers of God 
towards God and his righteousness than the previous generation. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 23, verse 15, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you travel over land and sea to win a single convert. And when you have succeeded, you make them twice as much as a child of hell as you are. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1 through 2, this is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. There is the house. Uh, uh, where is the house? You build me. Where will my rest be place be? Has not my hand made all these things? And so they came into being, declares the Lord. These are the ones I look on with favor those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word ladies and gentlemen our great god is looking for those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at his word now look at the word contrite by the way it means sorry remorseful repentful regretful apologetic and ashamed does any of this passage describe us as a nation today? I think you know the answer to that question. There are many in our nation who are humble and contrite before God and who tremble at his word. But as a whole, as a nation, we curse his holy name. We have removed him out of the schoolhouses. We have removed him out of the churches. Those churches who think they're following God, we have removed him out of our home. But as a whole, as a nation, we curse his holy name. We have picked a fight with God and we will lose. Those who walk by the flesh and not by the spirit, they will lose. The humble before him will receive his loving favor. The arrogant and the proud will receive his judgment. The Bible says in Isaiah 55 verse 10 to 11, as the rain and the snow came down from heaven and do not return to it without worrying the earth and making it bud and, and, and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Every word in God's word, which is the Bible, is true. It is a fact. And will happen exactly as God said. It really doesn't matter if one does not believe God's word. That doesn't change a thing. It has always been true. It is true and will always be true. John chapter 14 verse 6. For Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That no man comes unto the Father except through me. Going back to Isaiah 65. The Lord made it clear to Israel. <clears throat> that he sought him superficially so he turned to the gentiles to make them jealous but still they were stubborn they were stubborn against him see romans chapter 10 verse 20 to 21 and isaiah chapter 65 verse 1 through 3 so we as a nation are behaving exactly as we did then now read carefully what god says check this out isaiah 65 verse 1 through 3 i revealed myself to them to those who did not ask for me, I was found by those who did not seek me. To a nation that did not call on my name, I said, here I am and here am I. All day long, I have held out my hands to option people who walk not who walk in ways not good pursuing their own imagination a people who continuously provoke me to my very face. A holy and righteous God of heaven does not want any to perish. He longs that we believe in his son, Jesus Christ, and follow him. God came down from heaven and earth to show us the only way, to show us the way that we need to live. So the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is on the threshold. 
threshold of the return of Jesus Christ. The world is on the threshold of the judgment. The world is on the threshold of rapture. But this time, he will not come as a baby in a manger. He will come in all of his glory to judge and rule this earth. If you do not put your faith in him, you will die in sin. But if you put your faith in him today, you will be saved from the wrath that is to come. I am telling you today, do you know Jesus Christ? That is the question. If you are not walking by him, if you're not living by him, you need to understand what God's word says. You need to understand what he is saying to the people today. You need to understand his word and you need to look closer at his word today. Let's take a look at Joshua chapter 24. Here you see the deliverance from Egypt and how what God did then, he still does today, delivering people from evil, delivering people from sin by, by creating a way for them to turn back to him. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, I pray right now in your name that you will come to us today and open the hearts of those who do not want to listen to you. Lord, we humbly bow our heads today in understanding your word. And we want your word today, Lord. I ask you today to come into our hearts and make way for us. Seek us, Lord Jesus. Give us the, the, the desire to, to want to, to, to want you, which is the only way for us to be safe. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this moment in time. For whoever may be watching this live stream, Lord Heavenly Father, that you uproot in them your spirit to grow throughout their whole entire life. That they walk not by the flesh, but by your spirit. Heavenly Father, I give thanks unto your word today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. There really isn't no president or anybody out there that's really promising us anything worthwhile than God himself. <laughs> to be poor in spirit means to recognize our spiritual bankruptcy. Before a holy and perfect God, this is the first step to repentance before we can receive salvation that Christ offers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's important for us today to understand the right way to live. If you want to see a nation that turn themselves to God, go to Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. The Bible says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods from which your father served on the other side of the flood in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God it is he that has brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage in which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out all from before us, all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore, will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he hath done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourself, that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore, pit away, pit away said he, the strange gods which are among you and incline your hearts unto the Lord God of Israel and the people said unto Joshua the Lord our God will we serve in his voice we will obey ladies and gentlemen choose God today today may be the last day that you live be prepared for his coming the rapture is going to happen the church will be taken the question that you have to ask yourself is will you be with him in the clouds when he comes again <laughs>